Kitty. What are you doing, Kitty? <laughs> okay, so I got uh, <laughs> I got uh, some part numbers and everything figured out. So I wanted to put a larger uh, hydraulic filter on my backhoe. Um, the one that comes on it is unfortunately rather small, and uh, the um, the hydraulic filter restriction indicator light I felt was coming on too often. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, obviously the oil gets thicker when it's cold and what have you. Um, so, uh, I wanted a larger filter, um, to flow better when it was cold. And I found, um, I don't actually at the moment have a John Deere part number, but this here is a CarQuest number for the filter that will fit a 310D backhoe. Now, I don't know if it will fit <coughs> a 310D that has a uh, four-wheel drive. I feel like the, um, I feel like the front drive line would probably be in the way. Um, cause this is about twice the height or, you know, the, the vertical height of the one that was on there. And it's also a tighter micron filter. Um, Oh crap, I can't remember now. I think if I remember right that the original part number that went on it I think was a um uh was an 18 micron and this is about a 5 micron or something. Um and this part number and so I guess if we go with the Donaldson number here cuz Donaldson numbers are always very easy to interchange with, but uh this Donaldson number here will fit um, lots of other larger John Deere equipment. Um, and then here are the interchanges for a couple other, um, brands of filters. Uh, Fram is bullshit. Um, I absolutely can't stand their filters, but there's the number anyways. Um, the CarQuest filters as of right now anyways are made by Baldwin. And so there's a, a Baldwin part number for it. Um, and, uh, I wanted to put the uh, hydraulic filter that's on my backhoe onto my log splitter just simply to make parts easy. That way I don't have to have, you know, uh, seven different types of hydraulic filters lying around for different shit. And so I was trying to find a hydraulic filter head that would fit my backhoe. Um, and I actually ended up well, long story short, long story short, uh, one of the guys at the parts store found this part number here, and then here would be a couple other interchanges for that filter head. And I guess now we'll go out and take a look at that filter head. And I guess potentially I didn't give enough time maybe for somebody to pause the video and get all of those numbers. So as written on the box, that is a large hydraulic filter that will fit on a 310D and lots of other stuff. And then here is the, I call it the dual mount hydraulic filter head um, <coughs> that I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, so this here is that filter head. And what's unique about this filter head is that not only does it have two different types of thread on here, but it has two O-ring surfaces on here. Um, unfortunately for me, it has a uh, bypass in it. I actually don't want a bypass, but this at least is a 25-pound bypass. And so it is a, you know, reasonably heavy bypass. But... What is, and so <clears throat> this thread here is inch and a half by 16. So a very standard common thread. This evidently is inch and a quarter British thread. Now I have no idea what filter would go on here. Um, I actually can't find anything based on the part number. Um, so if somebody knows of a filter that would go on there, uh, please chime in and let me know. 
but so this here is the filter off of my backhoe just obviously cut down and so this is a recessed you know like threads are underneath the o-ring surface here recessed inch and a half by 16 thread so the thread is very common and there's nothing special about the thread the o-ring is a little bit funky though um you know uh what is it zagna or something fuck gotta look that up right quick so i got the uh spider-man app on my phone here so it's kind of hard to see here but this company uh zigna i guess they're you know uh very common hydraulic filter company um and these style well i guess those those style filters take an o-ring that goes in here the john deere filter has this o-ring here and you can see that uniquely or that you can see that it's unique that this filter head here can accept both type of o-rings and both of the filters are the same thread which is handy and so what my plan is is that i'll use these filter heads on my log splitter <coughs> and um, while i have access to them and can get them easily i will use this uh, zagna or zigna or however the fuck it's supposed to be pronounced uh, style filter this one here happens to be a car quest near as i can tell they are identical to baldwin filters although i wish they were still just bog standard baldwin filters this part number here is not actually a filter oops shit how do i do this This is actually a wire mesh, like a wire mesh screen. It's a lot easier to see in person, but it's a wire mesh screen as opposed to a paper or uh, paper or like fabric filter media in here. So instead of this thing being called a filter, it really should be called like a strainer or um, a screen or whatever. But yeah, this style, whoop, getting mixed up here, this style takes an O-ring on the outside diameter of it, like so, which this filter head will gladly accept, and then screw that filter down onto there like so just like I said it's not really a filter it's a screen I want to use this as a uh, inlet strainer for my log splitter which yes I know it's a huge filter for a log splitter but that just means it'll increase the oil capacity and last a very long time And then this one here is off of the backhoe. So I think that's pretty fucking nifty that I can use the two different types of filters. Um, because the backhoe style filter for me right now is about 70 to $80. Um, and like I said, that's for roughly a three micron filter. Um, this style filter here, I can get um, down in about the, what, $20 mark? Actually, less than $20, because um, I have, uh, I've, I found a couple good sources that I can get, uh, I can get this style filter extremely cheap. Um, and so, what I'm going to do is, while I have access to these style filters, I'm going to use these on the log splitter, 
but I'm going to keep a supply of backhoe filters around so that if need be, I can put a backhoe filter on here. Um, because these, I don't mind buying one at a time. Um, my primary concern is having parts and supplies and filters around for the backhoe. Um, and so I can just, you know, just as easily go out and buy, you know, 10 of these filters for the backhoe to ensure part supply for the future. And, uh, but while, while I do have access to it, I can use the much cheaper and much larger, uh, Zigna or whatever style filters. And so, you know, you can see while this style is not massively larger, it is certainly a larger filter. But yeah, so the filter head that's on the backhoe can only accept this style, but at least now um, here's a part number for a filter head that accepts two styles of filters, at least two styles. Like I said, uh, you could get even a different filter yet to go on there. Um, and uh, I, so as you can tell, this is a CarQuest slash Baldwin filter head. Um, I ordered a Donaldson uh, filter head that looks like it has uh, like test ports in multiple locations. And this one here, even though it's not drilled out, you know, there's a nice flat spot right there. The Donaldson, the Donaldson one looks like it has test ports on both sides of, you know, the inlet and the outlet of the filter, but also that it has ports on both sides over here. I'll show that when it comes in. But uh, this one here on a drill out, I guess, yeah, I'm gonna drill out that side to put a negative pressure gauge on there to be able to use the wire mesh strainer as a inlet strainer on the log splitter. Um, so yeah. Probably rambling on and talking in circles and shit, but just wanted to share that information.